Greetings, greetings, uh, listeners. Thank you for tuning in. Welcome to the Tuesday series, the Digital Online Streaming Mastery Show, Train the Trainer Edition. Uh, this is the uh, unit number 30, conduct number 25. 10 more units and 10 more uh, conducts. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, yes, 10 more units, 10 more conducts to hit the 40. Then we are done and we can regard ourselves as the subject matter experts. I know we are already almost there like that, but uh, you never know. 10 more units, 10 more conducts can change one's perspective, can change one uh, um, way of uh, showing up. So yeah, we we, we are grateful that we could move to this far. My name is Sam Zima. This is Kumaza Radio Worldwide. The mind, the journey, the destiny. We apply our mind to the journey that takes us to our destiny. The shows are based on the principle that we call the idea. We inform and entertain, develop and educate, empower and support, associate and network. We invite you to go back to the series and watch the previous uh, units and conducts. You can get that at insightsonlinepodcast.com or you can go straight to commerzaradioworldwide.com and uh, all the units and the previous conducts that have been discussed are in a form of podcast available there. You can get it as well at Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and many others. Um, don't miss the sequence. It's really a build-up to where we are today. Um, let me greet you once more, listeners, and welcome my co-anchors, co-hosts, George Mutenda Zamera, Rabula Uribani, Divesh Mutilal. I can see Marco has just joined, Franz Ramutla, and... Uh, uh, Ompile Liepile is here. Uh, Michael, I can see you on the public platform. I hope you're enjoying already this first start into the show. George, let me welcome you to greet the listeners and tell us how you have been since we last spoke last week and your perspective on today's topic. Over to you. Okay, George seems to be not able to come on. Let me, Rabula, welcome back. Uh, uh, I, I thought you would join us from Geneva, but looks like you're back in the country. Welcome back. <laughs> Good evening, Sam. Good evening to the listeners. Yes, a uh, person managed to come back yesterday, last night or yesterday. Uh, there's still some uh, itches there and there of uh, jet lag, but we are here. Uh, the, nothing comes to a standstill. Uh, he, things must move on. So that's how we are. That's what we are. So let's we'll share whatever we need to share on this platform. So thank yeah. you, Sam. I'm here. My name is Rapula Mudibani, uh, the owner, the managing director of Retali Villa Holding Group, specifically focusing on the mental and coaching for entrepreneurs. So we're here to come and share what we need to share with our uh, listeners. Thank you. Beautiful, beautiful. You made us admire you in front of those iconic institutions of the world in, in, in Geneva. So we, we, are, we, we, we are motivated to also show up there. Uh, I guess when you're there, you felt like you're on top of the world, not so. <laughs> No, no. You, 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 one thing which a person need to observe, always observe with a positive spirit. Uh, you mm -hmm. look at the country like Switzerland, how small it is, and then you manage to say all these big iconic uh, stages are housed in that country, uh, in a town called Geneva, and you look at the sense of, oh, that's where all decisions have been made. Mm -hmm. uh, and and you know, you know, yes, and you never hear about 
you never heard about uh, Sweden uh, vetoing or agreeing, disagreeing with any resolution, but they are holding all these discussions in their backyard. So, but it's one of those little things you learn. Yeah, well, I would behave the same if I had such iconic institutions in my account. Why will I cause trouble? <laughs> I'm joking. You are right. Yeah, you cross. You cross over to Zurich, and then there's the mighty FIFA house. Uh, no, I didn't reach even reach uh, Zurich. Uh, I think the the farthest I could go uh, was France. So just a small town, very iconic town next to uh, Geneva, but it's in France called Annecy. It's very interesting. So, but this, those are little things you learn. Uh, Thank you so much. Uh, welcome back home, and uh, we are glad you could join. Thank you so much. Divash? Evening, Sam. Evening to the listeners and evening colleagues. Uh, this is Divash Motilal, resident DJ at Kometsa Worldwide. Uh, member of Friends and Supporters Club. And uh, what I would like to share is uh, I've been involved in the tedious and sometimes, uh, you know, disengaged sort of approach towards uh, professionalizing the state, state being government institutions and entities, and focus has been towards uh, people who are involved with infrastructure or technical work who don't necessarily have the technical requirements or qualifications uh, or requisite experience. So we are doing our little bit to try and improve the situation and the end goal uh, being that uh, service delivery can improve uh, from the country. That, of course, stems from a... Um, a instruction that came from the president of the country, President Ramaphosa, that he wants to um, professionalize the, the state in terms of areas where we are involved with infrastructure. Uh, just mm. as well in terms of the point that we were discussing with uh, Rapula, uh, if there's an adage that says uh, those who stay in glass houses shouldn't throw stones, so seeing that Switzerland's got most of the world's uh, uh, re, you know, resources under control, uh, the ones that's above ground, I would also not want to fight with anyone because all our resources are actually sitting in that country. Uh, thank you, Sam. I, I, agree, Absolutely. I agree with you, uh, Diversh, and there's uh, uh, sort of a sense you pick up when you engage with the Swiss. You get the simple sense. No, 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 I live in peace. Why should it cause trouble? Thank you. Mm, mm. Absolutely, absolutely. And, uh, you know, they, those institutions uh, create jobs, even if they it might not be directly, but you can think of all those international people that live in that city and that travels across the world, um, how much uh, service they are being offered by locals and how much foreign currency they are bringing into the region. Um, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing. I wish we can have also in terms of the African Union, we can have some of the African Union uh, institutions in South Africa. Botswana has done very well. I think they, what do they have is, okay, they have SADC, North African Union. It's headquartered in Botswana. And then, of course, the uh, uh, African Free Trade uh, Area is headquartered in in in, in Ghana. Um, what else? Uh, and then, of course, Ethiopia is the home, the head office. Um, yeah, so I, I like that kind uh, kind of uh, competition to host these international bodies. Um, yeah, great stuff. Thanks. And 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 Divash uh, is wonderful to know that there is an effort to really professionalize. I guess the, the, impli impli the implied intention there is that the, that will improve the service to the people. It's not professionalization for the sake of professionalization. We want service and we want people to, be, to enjoy that service that they pay for in the form of taxes. Indeed, Sam. Beautiful. 
Who is next in line? George, I'm not sure whether you are still struggling to come up and uh, say a few words. Uh, let me move on to Margot, Franz Ramutla. Welcome, uh, Margot. Good evening, Prasam. Uh, good evening, colleagues, and good evening, listeners. Yeah, today, in uh, my preparation for today's uh, session, um, I visited an auto electrician to, to take my car there. Um, relevant to the topic today, I viewed myself as a customer and uh, uh, I had to look at the things I'm looking for, for from my service provider. And this auto electrician, then I found that uh, what makes me to go to him usually is his, um, uh, his ability to diagnose the problem when I go there and to the ability to address that uh, uh, problem effectively. Secondly, as, my, as his customer, I looked at his attitude. Whenever I go there, he received me with a smile, a hug, and a handshake. Uh, and uh, I've noted that uh, his prices are reasonable. Uh, therefore, uh, I, I realized that uh, the attributes that uh, uh, he, he has uh, uh, exhibited are in line with the, the input that we will be sharing today in terms of uh, the, the understanding the customers um, and, and the customer care. I also, as usual, attended a, an NGO meeting uh, where I am a coordinator. So it was very interesting to note that uh, after the previous meeting where we were not uh, um, having a, a quorum, uh, I decided to use as one uh, one of the media uh, platforms. I used the WhatsApp group today, and we almost uh, reached a, a hundred percent uh, quorum. I can say we reached a ninety percent quorum. And then from that meeting, I had the ability to note uh, some of the issues that we discussed in terms of the characteristics of uh, online uh, online uh, digital uh, platforms. There, I was able to, uh, I was able to communicate with the, with the, with the, 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 the people who were attending the meeting with me, with me. And I was able to reflect at some stages to make sure that uh, me and them are reading from uh, the same uh, uh, page. And then um, I was also able to, uh, to instill active participation because sometimes uh, some of them will be keeping quiet, but through reflection, they'll be able to come back and participate. The third thing that I did in my preparation for this uh, uh, session I read the, 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 the books by uh, Dale Carnegie and uh, I came across um, uh, one book that says Living is Selling. It says that when I speak to Brasem, I'm selling an idea. It even says when I ask my spouse for a date to go to a restaurant uh, that is selling and I'm expecting her to buy by accepting. And then um, the other uh, topic there was uh, how to win friends and influence people and sell uh, the ideas to them. So in this way, they say the way your customer wants to buy, it's a real modern sales cycle. It's one that depends on your ability to influence more than just one buyer. Understand what today's customers want from you and don't want. And use time-tested human relationship principles that will help you strengthen the relationships anywhere in the global economy. Yeah, this uh, wraps up my day. And uh, yeah, one of the focus of my day was to try and look at the topic for today 
and see at the areas of uh, areas of relevance that will enable me to participate and contribute. Thank you. Great insights, uh, Dada Ramuta. Thank you so much. That's that's beautiful to hear. And Dale Carnegie, the famous book, How to Make, I think it's called How to Make Friends and Influence, or whatever. I, I read book, I think I've got it somewhere here. It's, an, it's a classic of, I don't know when, the 60s, 80s, whatever, the, the, but it's still relevant even today. Agreed. Uh, every time you try to convince somebody to agree with you, you are actually selling. It might not be in the form of getting money, but but you are selling an idea or proposition, indeed. And I'm glad that you tried the, the the tips from last session to achieve full attendance today at your meeting. Thank you. Beautiful. Welcome, uh, Ompile. Uh, are you with us today? I'm glad to see you on the in the studio. Yes, uh, good evening, Tate Sam, and good evening to my colleagues and the listeners. Yes, today I'm listening. I was able to sort out my technical issues, and I'm fascinated about what we're going to be discussing today uh, already. I've learned a lot uh, uh, with regards to uh, what Divesh and Rapula uh, have been saying, and also France. So, uh, for me, uh, just to to reflect, I mean, to just jump in with my day check-in. Uh, today, I was just uh, trying to to fix my registration at the university, so I was able to register for the academic year of this year. So the academic year normally starts September, and I was one thing that was like my my wow moment was uh, last week when we saw. Our deputy president, uh, you know, uh, going in, in Limpopo, collapsing. So it was something that uh, spread it throughout. It was a shock to me, but uh, I was glad that he was actually good. Uh, so that was something that I, I just wanted to just mention. Uh, it was a shock for me that, uh, you know, this, uh, as much as we always criticize our leaders, they are actually uh, going through a lot and they they are doing a lot of work i heard that he was working from monday to sunday so i it, it was something that came to me that we must always try and pray and support uh, our leaders so that they can be able to overcome whatever that they might be going through yeah thank you mm -hmm. yeah it was a shock to all of us uh, when it was live on tv one didn't know what after after that what's next, but we glad that uh, he's doing well by based on what we hear. But I think also the what comes out of that is the realization that uh, loving kindness, as we always say, you know, in terms of mindfulness and meditation, you know, listening to the body and responding accordingly in terms of taking rest and all things. We're just talking under general without knowing in particular what caused it, but we can only associate it with amount of demands uh, and the pressures on the type of work he's holding. He's, he's the second citizen in the country. That's massive. Whether you are working or not, or you're sitting and thinking, you are thinking in terms of huge responsibility after the president. If the president says, uh, Mr. Deputy, I'm going to take a nap. Please don't sleep <laughs> while I'm sleeping. So that on its own could be a huge, huge demand. I know as citizens, as people, we we have every everything to say about every leader. But if you put yourself in their in their role, in their positions, it can be understood that there are demands in the, all these roles. But at the end of the day, you you're the only one who knows how far you can carry on and also have to try and uh, 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 inform those who are your handlers that you need break. But anyway, uh, I didn't know that it was such a global thing. Thanks, Ompile. Uh, uh, um, you situated there in Europe, uh, Paris. We use you as a control instrument, if I may use that, 
to check what is trending out of South Africa into the world. And we can tell you here at home what is trading, trending from the world into South Africa so that you remain in touch with us. And I'm glad you have registered for your academic year. And it's the last at academic year, right? You're completing your studies. Uh, yes, yes. At the moment, it was the last uh, academic year. So they have a lot of administration here in France. So a lot of uh, administrations. So I had to go through them. But it is indeed uh, my my last uh, registration. And I'm also uh, in, interested in what we're going to discuss today. It's always a key to me to always, uh, you know, satisfy the customers. So it's something that is very key to me, mm. what we are going to discuss uh, about today. I'm, I'm looking forward in learning more about how do you ensure that you you come, you create a customer and you make sure that you retain the customer. Indeed. That, that, that's, that's the whole idea, that's the whole focus of offering services and products. George, welcome. George, I can see your mic is off. Is 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 uh, is, is is ready? Um, if you are still battling and if you are talking and we can't hear you, I suggest that you you lock out and then lock in again. So, so somehow you are not coming through. Beautiful. Um, let's uh, let's look at uh, the the topic uh, uh, of today. Customer service and aftercare. In the context of our digital online streaming program and hosting of shows and um, inviting uh, guests, I think we have made this experience diverse then when we were still going through training, where we had a template, uh, even a template of a thank you letter. And we said that. Uh, once a, a guest has been into our radio, into our show, don't spend more than two days without going back to them to thank them. And the whole idea is that you want them to to and, and to know that you appreciate, and also want them to know that uh, you want to check if they made the same experience as they expected. Uh, so it was it was mandatory, and is the is a normal practice that should become culture in relationship with customers, even though the customer pay for the pays for the services. It's a, it's courteous for you to send them a thank you note, and and that that was the whole idea why we did it. Uh, George, I'm gonna give you time to say hi, and then at the same time delve into the first topic: who we are and what we do, uh, and as cast as 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 as. as uh, service providers, who are our customers, what is customer service, and who are customer service providers. Let's spend some time talking about those two, three points. George, if you can greet the listeners and also reflect on those three points. I hope you are able to to talk now. I hope I'm not the only one who's not hearing George. No, it's not visible. Um, uh, audible. Sorry. I also don't hear him, but it looks like he is mute in terms of what I'm seeing. Yeah. Uh, he keeps on opening his microphone, and, and I thought he would be able to talk, but he doesn't seem to. Probably he's talking, but we can't hear him. Yeah. So so I guess the first question to answer is always uh, Umpile. Uh, okay, so we lost Umpile. To say to define who your customer is, and let's 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 look at customers broadly, and then narrow it down to traditional customers. Who will be the customers um, of us holistically uh, in this in this uh, platform or in the shows? In your view, and in your own particular company, Tivesh. Well, in relation to the the area of focus with regards to our show, so the main customer for me is the listeners. And um, there's a value chain, in fact. So you've got your listeners who are your customers at the end. 
you've also got a platform which you would be utilizing, uh, even if it's a, a online radio station type of uh, platform. That again is a customer that you would also have to keep in mind. But as well, your guest as well can also be seen as a customer where you want to get the best out of him and not only in terms of the content and information that you share to the listeners, but also in terms of being able to promote him as an individual uh, um, if he's representing a business or an institution. You want to also utilize the platform and your show to also uh, elevate uh, his initiatives, his products that he might also is in his, his institution that he's also representing. Mm. 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 So, so you, once you have understood your customer, you will then look at what is the service that they're buying from you. In terms of the platform, Divesh, we will be the customer to the platform. But people that come to, to the platform to access us, they will be our customers. So it's, it's quite very, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a value chain of relationships, if you may look at that way. And then within ourselves, we who provides the service. So will that be the service to the customers? In this case, is the platform, but it could also be the guest uh, that we bring in to engage with the listeners. Will that will that will that fit the definition? So, so my my uh, approach, I agree with uh, Divesh. And but however, I'll add some sweet down need of saying my customers are those listeners who are hungry for knowledge. Because don't forget, that's how I differentiate myself with the other podcasters. Because uh, uh, don't forget the motto of the ideas into the picture, which develop mm -hmm. uh, put that, that picture into the customer's mind. I need to maintain that. Because here I'm just making sure that my customers is, I use the word of saying, is giving a wisdom to make sure that uh, I retain the similar customers and still increase my customer base around that. That's how I'll define it in terms of the, uh, the current platform. So that will be somebody that uh, receive value from what you are delivering in the form of informing, yes. entertaining, developing, educating, empowering, supporting, associating, and networking. Exactly. But if they don't see that as being the product services provided to them, they could just be, you could just be making noise, right? On, on your own, yes. Only okay. find that you, you don't have customers who are keen and willing to tap on your wisdom. But if they're still there, and I, I believe and I agree that uh, we have those customers, that's why we're still growing and growing very softly and very strongly in the industry itself. Do they qualify as customers even though they don't pay us? Yes, they do. Mm. They do. They, what do they, they, know? they, con they consume our product. Mm. And what do so they know we expecting from them other than money? Um, at this stage, we haven't quantified the value extraction from them, but they have quantified the value extraction for ourselves. Mm. Because key to that is we also pr uh, provide a platform to sell our services. Mm. Mm. The only thing we haven't say when we receive a customer, no, I got to know about Rapula on this platform. Mm. Perhaps we should start uh, quantifying that and say that's how we pick up our customers. But yeah. we know yeah. our customers yeah. love our show. Yeah. And, and And from here, we can channel them into our sales funnel and they could come on the other side and and sometimes you may even forget that that's how, how you got them yes yeah so so uh, uh Divesh? yes sam uh, in terms of value proposition uh, as uh, rapula was mentioning there is various aspects that we could look at, not necessarily direct monetary uh, value, but uh, in the space of uh, digital online uh, streaming, uh, the intention is firstly to obviously get a, as many listeners uh, as possible and then converting those listenerships 
into some kind of following where mm. they could actually just keep listening in on your show and you'd want to actually grow that to a point where you can either uh, provide them with additional services which can then be turned into a monetary value or because of the amount of followers that you would get you could potentially as well uh, monetize that from other kinds of uh, platforms which do work on those business models sam mm. So we could, we might as well also talk of potential customers then. Yes, indeed. The digital online uh, business models that you want to follow is uh, acquiring as many potential customers as possible and then mm. fe feeding, feeding them into your sales channel so that you can funnel them out into actual value propositions at the end. So in our space, and as we've been sharing over the modules, uh, that value proposition is much broader than monetary terms in a direct perspective. It could mm. mean uh, more content, uh, more guests, uh, even amongst members in our uh, supporters club, for example, there could be mm. business opportunities and that aspect which we touched on uh, last week in terms of networking is also a value proposition which may not necessarily be immediately directly linked to a financial reward, Sam. Beautiful, beautiful. Great. Uh, and, and, any, any comments there, uh, 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 Margot, around the, the, the three points that we are addressing now? That the definition of your customer, the kind of service and products you offer, and then, of course, who within among yourself provide what service? Uh, and I, I've seen that some in some organization, everybody else in that organization is regarded as a provider of service, including the cleaners and the security and drivers. They are all part of the provision of the service. They may not be the ones that are in point contact to with. The, the customers, but they are contributing to to the ultimate value proposition that is delivered face to face by the so called salespeople. So, so the definition of of is very very important. Understanding of all this is very important because it influences your attitude in relationship to your own internal people who might not necessarily be having direct contact with customers rapidly. Yes, Sam, you are right. I just want to add uh, what Divesh was saying regarding the building a database around that. Um, recently, I'm going to use as an example. I was listening to a presentation done on entrepreneurship by a company based in the U.S. So it was an online presentation. It was a very interesting presentation. And subsequent presentation ended, and I asked the question, can I get that on a uh, uh, presentation? She said to me, yes. Uh, but they said there was a, a catch. A catch was, yes, you can get it, but it costs $5. Mm -hmm. That says to you, the mm -hmm. institution has built sufficient database to say, we are building this uh, podcast. Who knows in two years' time, we'll do a podcast like we do it now, interacting with the customers. And subsequently, can say the customers say, can I have received a copy of the podcast? said, yes, but there's a 10 run you need to pay around it. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Mm. That's how you start building that uh, profile, that brand, that product. And by do so doing, you are not looking in the short term, you're looking long term. Yeah. Sometimes they'll say, please uh, complete, uh, participate in our questionnaire, after which we'll give you a white paper or a publication or a research report, something like that. So you can see that they are, they are wanting you to be, to give them the permission to add you to their database. But that is an incentive. Exactly. Hmm. George, uh, uh, we can see you online. I don't know whether you can hear us. George has just dropped me a note to say he's online, but we can't hear him. I don't know whether he can hear us. Michael, if you can, please uh, just get hold of George and let him know that we see him in the studio but we don't hear him and it looks like he does not hear us. So you might have to lock back, lock out and lock back in. 
Great. So let's go to the uh, the next point here. It's about establishing your attitude. Why is the attitude so important uh, as somebody that is uh, a service provider to customers? And what are the challenges uh, or in terms of the of the attitude? Who says you've got the right, who determine whether you've got the right attitude or not? Do you know, do you know Sam, one of the things uh, I'm I'm trying to put in the, into a bo- box right now, one of the things which when I'm doing a mentor and coaching for entrepreneurs, I will say, don't op- open a business unless you've got a customer. Mm-hmm. And secondly, one of the key elements about the customer is customers always complain. Your response to that customer will determine whether you've got a customer or not. That brings the issue of attitude. And I'll say, because that customer pays your bill, whether his attitude is wrong or right, it's your responsibility to manage it, to make sure that you get your income. Mm. Mm. So that is an issue which you say, how does the attitude come in in a customer management? That is an idea. And very often I'll say, even if when you walk into your premises with your business, something trigger you to be in a bad mood, but when that customer walk in, you need to change very quick and very fast. Mm. And secondly, the customer who complains, listen to that customer, even if complaints is irrelevant, which means that customer will want to come back. Because the person who doesn't complain are the one need to be extremely worried about them. They won't, they may not guarantee they're coming back. Yes. Mm. Yes. So, so is it, is there an attitude for customers and an attitude for everybody else, or is there just good attitude that needs to be there all the time? Especially if you know in your business you are custom deal with customers. But, but, and one have two different kind of attitudes for different kind of people. My 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 take on that. Uh, my take on that is uh, determine your attitude as a, as a business owner in terms of who is your customer. And once you've determined that, you need to come, remain calm at all times. Because if you don't, you don't know what influence that customer has in terms of other customers you don't know about. Because mm-hmm. if you can say, we're going to have a tit for tat with that customer, you may kiss your business bye-bye because the customer pays your bill. Now here's the here's the issue. Must we work on our attitude uh, so that we are the type of people that don't have enough effort to be good to be having good relationship with customers, or must we always think very hard and fast when we find ourselves facing the customer? What is the safest route to to ensure that your attitude is always such that it will be liked by the customers. George? Uh, mine, won't, uh, mine won't come from psychological perspective, but it will come from what you say, a wisdom. Always, irrespective mm-hmm. of when and where, always remain calm. Mm, yeah. So so there are certain personalities that uh, that will work very well in a customer-facing environment, right? Yes. What do you do then if you don't have and you and yourself uh, with your business, you are everything and uh, sometimes you get challenged and you wake up having found yourself not treated the customer in a way that they're supposed to be treated and you've endangered that relationship. I, I don't think I've got answers for it. My approach is if you don't have that, outsource it. Mm. Yeah, but sometimes it's not you, but it's the people who work with you or work for you. So what must you do if their attitude is not right, especially when you are not there? Uh, and that there are mood. Yes, um, I think uh, what Rapula have just said is it Rapula or Rumpil? Rabula. 
It's very challenging when he says the, the response to the customer will determine whether you have a customer or not. Um, some of the customers uh, seems to be very, very uh, abusive. And uh, <coughs> I want to uh, take the advice of the Rapula that uh, you must try to be as calm as possible. But you sometimes you find that uh, um, the way the customer is uh, the way the customer is uh, treating you uh, is equal to amounting to taking you out of business. And sometimes you try to be as calm as possible to the extent that you find that uh, you become uh, helpless. And uh, you try to elevate, you find that the people who are elevating to seem like to be um, in the same page with the people that you are dealing with directly. And mm -hmm. you elevate to the second level, the second highest level, you still don't find, um, uh, uh, you, didn't, you, don't, you still don't find uh, good answers from, sometimes they just keep quiet. And they keep quiet for a week. So, Rapula, in instances like this, what do we do? You are painting a scenario of a very big organization, that Ramuta, right? Yes, a very big organization. They know that you need them, even though you provided a service to them, but they can take their time to to respond to your needs as a supplier. And now you are tested to the limit. Yes, we are tested to the limit indeed. But um, as I say, that thing, uh, especially when it comes to payments, uh, it has the potential of taking you out of business, especially when you are just, uh, you have just, started uh, the business and they are maybe one of your biggest uh, customers. I guess the argument here is that uh, you shouldn't shy away from asking for your money, but it's the how that, that, that is important. Say it with a smile. Don't, don't, don't throw tantrums and don't, don't behave in a way that they, they, you, you take it personal and the, the, the personalities of yours and those of the people from the customer side that are servicing you are at play now. It's no longer about your company and their company. It's about you as individuals. Then you have lost You have lost the plot there. That's how I would look at it, Divesh. Yes, uh, Sam and uh, uh, Franz. The issue you're dealing with is uh, in relation to the topic of tonight is about uh, relationship building with your customer. And unfortunately, uh, I wouldn't say only in South Africa, but let's deal with the now. Uh, that yeah. relationship, sometimes you've done everything, you've checked all the boxes, and you sit and you wait for your well-deserved payment. But uh, certain instances require you to have that level of relationship with people who are the gatekeepers. So like mm -hmm. Sam is also alluding, you've got to have those, you know who those gatekeepers are firstly, and, and, and unlock whatever barriers are, they are for you to uh, you know, get uh, paid for the services that you've delivered. So mm. it's about a relationship uh, that you've got to have to work on and find out why there is a gatekeeper or who the gatekeeper is and how you need to unlock whatever is blocking the progress that you desire. Mm. So the context here is that there is sales, there is delivery, there is invoicing, and there is customer service. So we're talking about customer service, which is actually a, a Servicing that relationship with the customer so that they remain your customer. Issuing them an invoice is not customer sales. You are selling to them. Once you have sold to them, they pay you. Now you must maintain the relationship. So, so in other words, uh, take the sales out of the picture. It's about the relationship. 
Of course, the lack of paying you can damage that relationship. And if that relationship is weak, it will go out of the window immediately. But if that relationship is strong, they'll take a call and say, what has happened today? You, you normally don't behave like this. That means you have a very good relationship that they can tell you when you have rubbed them wrongly. But if you don't have a strong relationship, they'll just, they can just close the account. I think that's the distinguishing factor, I guess, uh, that I'm with. Yes, um, uh, actually, uh, you touched on it sometimes. Uh, yeah, Divesh touched on it. Sometimes it's around personalities uh, mm. and, and, and pricing. You find that because you are a, a, a new company, your pricing is very, very low. And uh, as time continues, you want to improve on your, uh, on your prices. And uh, now the customer is not interested. So but because, you don't, because you don't have a very good relationship, so they can't understand and be empathetic with you. That's actually the point that I think maybe we need to emphasize, that certain things have to wait until you build very good relationships. So, so I, I want to yes, acknowledge okay, that sometimes uh, mm -hmm. Because of the prevailing uh, attitude of an individual within the company, the, you find that I have now accepted that the relationship is broken and cannot be rebuilt. Maybe because of my attitude or because of the attitude of the person that I'm working with in that company. Yeah. So the personalities and the attitude determine the sustainability of the relationship. That's why escalation is also important if you know. I agree with all the, the submissions that uh, yes, I, I admit that. I think I agree that the relationship is the one that uh, will build uh, the customer um, customer supplier relationship that is sustainable. Mm. Yeah, so I think we're talking about the behaviors. That's why we're talking about the, the, you know, as Rabula was saying, you know, the attitude, show the smile, and be energized and be always positive. Even the person that might be not taking you serious, give them the benefit of the doubt because it's not their company. They are just employees. George, are you able to interject there? I think George must be experiencing connectivity challenges today. Uh, he comes through, but the, the, the network can't carry his voice. Okay. So, uh, Umpile, is there any point you want to say around the point of uh, uh, establishing good attitude? Yes. Uh, you mean uh, establishing good attitude with the customer? Yeah, uh, so that you are able to give customer service that is receptive and value add. Yes, uh, from my side, I, I think uh, it's it's always uh, good to understand. For, in order to build a relationship with a customer, it's always good to understand first uh, the needs of the customer, or they call it the pains uh, of the customers. So once uh, I believe once you you know those pains. Uh, you are able to adjust uh, the the you, you are able to adjust an attitude that will be able to to serve uh, that customer. If, for example, maybe uh, while I was at PSG, I used to do uh, like customer internal customer support. So in IT, your customers normally would be people within the company. So you are saving them because uh, IT mostly it's like a supporting function. So I would understand their customers. Maybe they would want to use a new system. So I would understand first that, uh, you know, these people, maybe I would look at the person, I would say maybe this people is a baby boomer. Or maybe this person is a generation Z. So based on their needs and also who they are, I would be able to, to, to put my, my, my attitude, uh, based on who they are 
and then so that I can be able to serve them well. Because if I'm dealing with someone old, I would know that this person might be able, he wants to use the system and it might be truly difficult for them to use the system. So I would have to be a bit slower with them. And then if it's someone like uh, Gen Z, I would be able to understand that. Uh, but that's just an assumption, obviously. But normally that, that's something that is mostly general. And I will be able to say this person is a Gen Z and that means they are more able to learn quickly with technology. So I won't have to be more slower, maybe explaining some digital uh, content or some digital information to them. So yeah, I believe that I agree with other uh, our fellow colleagues about you know making sure that you 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 have a good attitude towards your customers in in order to make sure that the customers are happy and never to to fight with the customer or or have a, a problem with them. So it's always to even if the customer is is pointing wrong at you, it's always good to just make sure that you end in in peace with the customer, not to show any negative attitude towards them. You have just touched also on point three, which is basically uh, understanding the uh, the customer's needs. You you mentioned that it's like you're going extra mile to meet the needs of the customer. That particular customer you have just painted, an elderly somebody that is not comfortable with technology or doesn't understand certain things, you put yourself in the shoes of that person and you go extra mile to meet their basic needs. And 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 of being creative, how to help them and understanding their situation. So that is actually that is uh, 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 identifying the needs of the customer and delivering on them. Whereas the first point we were talking about was about your attitude, which is anything else before even you touch the customer, before even you deliver the customer. So there need to be intentionality about it that your attitude can be a blockage to you. Being able to be able to deliver the needs of the customer, even if you have understood them, right? I hope I, I hope it's getting clearer because the issue of attitude is something that uh, is a trigger. You know, you can you can be triggered without you not intending to be triggered. So therefore, you need to be cautious of the fact that you could be triggered into into what your true attitude is, especially if you have not become aware of the fact that you are irritable, you are intolerant, uh, you you are not a friendly person, you, you are not able to smile, you are not able to remain energetic and positive at the top. Therefore, that on its own disqualify you to be a customer facing. Now, after that, if we tick the box there, then you need to be able to be deliver very good customer service, you need to understand the needs of the customer and put yourself in the shoes of the customer. And one, and also understand the situation of the customer as you painted the uh, uh, umpile. Uh, 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 if you have a good attitude, but you don't have the ability to un- understand the needs of the customer and appreciate the situation of a customer, you having a good attitude doesn't make you deliver a good customer service. I think the combination of the two that there are with is excellent. Uh, George, are you able to talk? I, I'm looking longing to hear your input, uh, George. Otherwise, that there are is it clarifying it now better, George? Yeah, I've had to log in with another. Uh, uh, yeah, let's give George from when we started the relationship with the company. Uh, unfortunately, sorry, I was saying I carry on. I it takes me back from when we started the relationship with the company. Uh, it didn't start well. But as the colleagues are, are, are advising now that uh, you just keep your cool and then you just remain warm. But as time continues, you find that, as I said, sometimes, as Prasem has said, it is an individual in the company and that person is not the company. But as Prasem has said, you elevate. But when you elevate, you find that uh, the attitude doesn't change. Sometimes when you elevate, they call you to a meeting and um, 
they, 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 they issue out the outcome of the meeting. When you make an input on the outcome, they just keep quiet. And when they keep quiet, um, the complaint that you, 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 you have put on the table remain the same. And that is a, a vicious cycle. And then as you, you elevate from the first uh, uh, senior person, you elevate to the second, and then you find yourself, you find yourself uh, them keeping quiet. And what is what I see as a risk now, as they keep quiet, you start writing a long story. And the more you write a long story, the more they get agitated and they end up keeping quiet. But Prasem, those are the dynamics of uh, um, relationships, attitude, uh, identify their needs and try to adjust your, your, your services according to their needs. But you find that you are hitting a rock. But yeah, it's a journey. It's a journey uh, for me. What is important is, uh, is we that... share now, one could be able to see how to mitigate uh, this challenge. What is important is not to let to let one experience or incident change who you are in terms of your philosophy of how you relate to customers and how you offer customer service because those will always be there. George? Uh, yeah, now, Sam, I'm not too sure where we are now. Uh, just help me there so maybe I can yeah, input. No, no. I'm, glad you are able, I'm glad you are able to hear us. Maybe let's spare you a moment to, to first face, face, face yourself, uh, uh, enter the discussion. We were talking about the attitude as a somebody who delivered in the customer service and then we're also talking about the importance of understanding and unpacking the needs of a customer, including the understanding the situation of the customer. So I was just saying to Dr. Ramula, in this case, his situation uh, it, it seems to be informed by an incident. Now we are saying that don't let one incident make you change your whole perspective about customer relationship and customer service offering. Because, because those are... are those are like extreme cases where you find that you escalate to the higher leadership in the customer's uh, hierarchy. And then you find that the higher, the higher hierarchy leadership is behaving the same way as the person at the point of say. Then it's a situation with that company not having a philosophy of building good relationship with their, with their supplier, George. Yes, yes. Okay, that's sounding to me like an issue of culture, uh, yes. usually uh, a business that has a culture that's customer centric. Uh, mm. that you will see by the way the senior management respond to any complaint. They, they That person will be out of a job in no time. Uh, but yeah. if they are defending the offending employee, then there's a problem. It's a cultural issue. And so it goes much yeah. deeper than uh, just that individual issue. And the long-term impact of that is that that business may not stay too long eh? <laughs> in that mm. space because competitors come in who are customers. Mm. So... Uh, in, in the case that uh, that Ramut has presented, he's been made to throw away the whole concept of customer service out of the window because he's not even able to practice it. Am I right in that Ramut? Because of the frustrations. And yet the intention was you want to be very good at customer service. Indeed, Pastor, it is true. Mm. Uh, right now, we, we had our plans to uh, improve the quality of the, the the quality of the product we're doing. Uh, we have aligned and assessed the 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 the, the quality of the service they need, as you are saying. We are not. We are not available. We are not able to move the next step, uh, yeah. enhancing the growth of our company. 
within the needs of the, 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 the our customers. Yes, indeed. And I assume, uh, Divesh, any company that is, tra- is going through difficulties is, is facing the challenge of actually changing their value system and their, their, their behaviors or their principles. But, but we are saying that, that that should not be. Yes, Sam. Uh, indeed, there is huge elements of service-orientated businesses who are really looking at how they engage with customers and service providers for that matter. Uh, unfortunately, it is a it is a long uh, journey that uh, we need to go in, especially if we look at the government services sector, which doesn't necessarily see the aspect of if we don't improve service delivery or customer becomes customer centric in the business that we offer, that we'll close down. They don't see uh, there being competitiveness in their space. And unfortunately, even if you do build that uh, customer relationship, uh, service provider relationship with an end customer, uh, you do get elements of unethical practices. And again, it's something that you need to uh, elevate yourself uh, uh, towards a level of dealing with that unethical behavior. Uh, in, in relation to the example Francis uh, eluding to, I'm pretty sure that it's a case of unethical behavior, which is causing all the frustration and the delays. If there was something that was outstanding through a regular customer-centric approach, uh, customer relationship building approach, which we are sharing here tonight on Kometsa Radio, uh, then it would have revol- resolved his challenges. But if it's an issue where they want to drag it out, it means that there is definitely some et- unethical behavior that's at play, and it does re- require a different approach as opposed to being the friendly, uh, smiley uh, uh, person that you're part of a customer relationship. Yeah. And I must say, thanks, George, uh, uh, Divash. I must say, I, I, I have in, in cases that I can refer to in my own situation where I, I, I looked afterwards and realized that I could have behaved a little bit better, uh, but uh, uh, because of pressures, you, you end up actually rubbing that relationship in a way that is not right. Sometimes they may not tell you, but you can, you know, you know yourself that here, I think I've upset the client. And the problem with that is that you run a risk of not uh, securing return business. And that's the next point we talk about. The value of custom, good customer relationship is securing return, return business from the existing client. And in my experience, uh, 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 Rapula, I find that the, the, the sustain, <laughs> excuse me, the sustainability of business is really very much very much depending on the return business. And if you are not able to secure return business, it becomes very, very challenging to remain in business because you can't always be securing your clients. You can, but you shouldn't always be, you shouldn't base your growth on on just securing. You must retain clients. Yes. That's why it's so important. You are right. That's why I often say is if you've got a very good mixture of the two, and a mixture I mean uh, if 50% of your cash flow is a, a, a continuing customers and 50% of new customers, then you are in for a business for a longer period. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and return cast business. In other words, business from the existing customer, it's a, it's, it's a very easy business. All what it needs is that uh, just nurture the relationship and deliver on what is expected as you have always delivered and don't lower the standard that they are used to. If you know that you are going to lower the standard, make sure that you reach out to them before they experience it themselves. Exactly. No ex- exactly. Because don't forget, first impression lasts longer. If right there the first uh, deliverer of the product, you were right there with the, the best service delivery. 
uh, and only to find that in a process you miss the boat, uh, chances are they may not even come back. And it's very painful to lose a client that you have been well, Ask me about that. <laughs> it's very painful to the client whom you have invoiced before. It is very painful. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's what makes it quite very difficult because sometimes they also have their own expectations, but they don't communicate them to you. They say, hey, Rapula, we have been giving Rapula for, for good business for three years. Why can't he just this for in the fourth year just give us a discount? So that means you must also listen to the vibes, George. Exactly. <laughs> that's right. Uh, listen, listening to clients is the biggest uh, challenge just to understand them, what they want. Because once they find good service, they don't want to go look elsewhere. You really have to mess it up big time for them to leave you. But it's also important, uh, just like the good wife at home, to buy the roses and uh, the chocolates to ensure things are sustainable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, at the end of the day, you are dealing with individuals who are the representative of this company. We keep on saying client, client, but this particular client being a company, you're talking of individuals. Maybe there's individual one, individual two, individual three. And now you're having individual four or five, and they, all of them, they, they meet together in a meeting and they discuss you. And if one of them just gets wrapped wrongly, can he can go or he go she can go and influence the rest to say, I no, no, this one, I don't think we need him anymore. And then they may say things that make the others believe, ha, ah, is this how he is? <laughs> so that way it becomes very dicey. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's very true, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so don't over save this one person and forget that the rest in the Tramut. Yeah, indeed. Uh, Divesh has talked about uh, unethical practices. Uh, you know, I'm dealing with a company that uh, has got a code of ethical practice. And uh, you know, the, the code of conduct is one of the dispute resolution mechanism. Even when you quote certain clauses in that code of conduct, uh, an article practice continues. But I agree with the uh, defense that now this requires a different approach. This issue of escalating, escalating, yeah, one has to think about uh, another approach. Yeah. And also, and also, Dadera Mutla, I think uh, when you get to the point where you are even having to point the code of ethics and conduct to a client from their own book, that might just be kissing goodbye to business. What do you think, Divesh? <laughs> you know, sometimes, Sam, I mean, there's a there's a a, a predetermined uh, endpoint that you must decide as a business person or even on an individual level to say you've reached your full, your cup is uh, not going to be overfilling. And sometimes it's a difficult decision to make that uh, even in relation to uh, our point of discussion for the digital online streaming, that sometimes it's just best to part ways. you got to decide whether you can take the, the journey further, take the fight uh, further. But sometimes the difficult decision is to really part ways and uh, and, and something as well, which is also important, uh, which Rapula mentioned, is sometimes you also got to balance your risks uh, in that if this kind of situations materialize, your business doesn't just close up because of a customer that you've had uh, destroying destroying everything that you've built. You've got to actually manage your risks so mm. that if this uh, materializes, you do have other uh, customers that can uh, keep you uh, afloat while you decide what path to take next. Mm. Especially in respect to the sector in which you are practicing because the weight goes around and then you end up having people, even the potential customers starting to shy away from you. 
And this this speaks also to the next point, which is about uh, 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 um, uh, 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 turning difficult customers around addressing complaints and following up. So it says, but I, I agree with you, Divash. You need to know up to how far you can chase. Especially if even we, look, it's business it is not business unless you sometimes take losses. Sometimes, you know, you're chasing after one big amount, but you in doing so, you lose 100 other smaller amounts. And when you add it together, you realize that, uh, yes, you lost big money, but you kept smaller amounts, but you've kept clients. So so turning around, the difficult clients sometimes are a learning ground, painful as it is. And and and, and you, you you learn to 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 understand that uh, not everybody that you negotiate business with is going to turn around to be very good experience for you. But if you're going to personalize it, then you are not servicing your business. You are servicing your own emotions as a person. Right. Right. You know? And, and sometimes, you know, if you feel that you have got short valves, if I may use that, send somebody, a colleague, to chase after the money than yourself because you are not going to talk nicely to people. You might say, yes, but there's a contract I delivered. Pay me. But uh, they pay you and then they delete you from the supplier at the base. Or they never, they take an oath to, to take a decision never to invite you. And they won't tell you and you won't even know. That's the sad part. So, so, but I think if, if, if you already have a, a difficult customer or a, 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 a customer with whom you made a bad experience. You have nothing to lose in trying to turn that into positive. You can only gain. What do you think, Rabula? Dadra Mut. I was going to allude by saying you are correct, Sam by uh, turning a difficult client into a positive energy. Mm. And in so doing, even if you, you, you realize the potential of the client and they decided, you know what, even if I had to take uh, a solid product, product at a cost, let it be, because the future value from this customer is much more bigger than the current uh, cost of the product. Mm -hmm. mm. But yeah, it's also also very. Can you hear me? Uh, my, my, today, yeah. my uh, my connectivity is really quite a challenge. You can hear yeah. me. Okay. Can hear I, was going, I was going to say that uh, whether the customer stays or goes, it's always an opportunity to learn for your business. If if mm -hmm. they go, then you must review and say, where did what could we have done better? Yeah. We did X, could we have done better? Uh, if really you could have done better and didn't, then that's a learning point. He is mm. gone, but uh, that's a learning point for the future. But if, yeah. you, if you did all that was humanly possible to retain him and they still left, then it's a learning to, to say, when we get someone who, who is going in this direction, it's, it's, it's an opportunity to, one, clarify your position as a business. This is what we stand for. These are the things that we do. And obviously, if he, they, that individual can't work with that, then that's when you part ways. So I don't think a customer will always be there irrespective of the attitude and behavior. But it, it's, it's, you must always come away from the situation having learned a lesson and done the best you can. Mm -hmm. I think I think if if you can tick those boxes, you will always have the client who will walk away. But uh, you tick the boxes that you've done the best you can. Yeah, especially if the client is professional enough not to close the communication channels. I must say that the, my experience is that there are certain clients that they just choose not to, as Rapul as Ntatera Mudla was say, they just choose to ignore you. They, they, you send the WhatsApp, the blue tick you. You send the email, 
they don't respond. You call, they don't answer. Right. That, 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 that is, if they do that, they're really playing emotional game. And that, that is no longer about their, their business and your business. It's really about them as, as a person because that is unprofessional. And therefore, maybe worrying about them is not going to be healthy for you emotionally. Right. That's true. Uh, thanks, uh, George. Uh, on a positive note, uh, the situation that we find ourselves in, we can take it as a, uh, a learning curve. And uh, yeah, we are gradually accepting that uh, we have lost the, the client, but we are taking advantage of the lessons we learned from working with them to diversify and do other things that were on the plan, uh, yeah. but we didn't push because we were focusing on them. So right now we, we are happy because uh, we have started with um, other products that uh, we, have, we have identified uh, the cash cows that we must work with whilst waiting for the money that is not forthcoming. We realize that if we just wait and wait and wait and fall into their trap of just keeping quiet, let us do something. And we're happy that uh, there are products that on, are, are on the line now that um, uh, have got a, a customer base that we can start saving. Yeah. And uh, can, I, can, can I use your case study again to bring another perspective? Yes. What if your client has has got the uh, issues that they feel make them justified to treat you the way you have they've treated you, but they they just don't think they want to tell you. Uh, it is just difficult because uh, once they keep quiet, I won't be able to to understand what what are they up to. Mm. But I want to be honest that uh, some of their action was provocative and uh, led me to respond in a particular way. Like mm -hmm. I say, I write long stories. In writing long stories somewhere, there is an element of truth that you are saying which they don't want to listen to. And they just keep, they just uh, choose to keep quiet. Now, so I wouldn't know what that. This is, let's sit on your case again. I'm just playing a devil's advocate. Yes. Uh, what if they say you are not prepared to bring yourself below them? Because you are, you are clear about what you think is rightly due to you. This but, is very interesting, Utipatan, <laughs> because the, there were two uh, bills they have to pay. One bill I reduced by 40%, they pay immediately. One bill I reduced by 10% because I moved the goalpost. I, I, did, I, I didn't stick to the initial uh, cost. I, I reduced by 10%. They just keep quiet. Or at some right. stage, the uh, uh, arrangements were made for them to pay, but they decided to pay an amount. They just decided to pay their own amount. So what if I say that we are now? What if I say this, so this that, uh, that yeah. had, um, It's a case study, isn't it, Basim? Yeah, it's a case yeah. study. What if I say that the situation that you find yourself in, you and them, is as a result of not having good customer services experience having been brought up front? Or maybe the time was too short for you guys to develop a rapport in terms of which you can then experience good customer services. Uh, Rabula, it doesn't have to be in that I'm answering. Uh, Sam, you're right. Um, I'll take leverage from what George says, or he says, do you know, do you know sometimes as uh, business owners, we need to go back to the drawing boards. I said, what is the learning from here? Uh, humble yourself and humble your team. Uh, and subsequent to that, even if the, how difficult the customer could be, the question you need to go back is say, what is my return on investment in this customer? If it's appropriate to continue fighting, do it. If it's not, 
I'm not using fighting in a spirit of real fighting. I'm using fighting in a spirit of saying, I have to retain this customer. No more can John. So if it's not worth it, and then you realize that you need to go start from scratch, do it. Don't even hesitate to say, yeah. let, me cut, let me cut my losses now. Because if I maybe go beyond these losses, I might end up in a, a serious tears. Yes. And you might not only lose a business, you also lose your brand. Exactly. Oh. The re- brand reputation and, and all those type of things. And, and that speaks to point number eight, which is uh, again about recovering difficult customers. They talk about de-escalating anger. Mm. Uh, try to establish common ground between you and the customer that you are not finding each other. And then setting your limits, as uh, as as as, as Tivesh was saying, there's a certain limits you, you have to set and not go beyond. And then, of course, managing your own emotions. Because, because in a customer-supplier relationship conflict, there are no winners. Mm. The customer loses a supplier. Maybe you are very good in your own way. They lose you, and then you lose a customer. Yes, you find other customers, but it's not going to be customer George. It's going to be somebody else who brings another dynamics, which might also be new. So I think I think customer services and customer relationship speaks to us as actionaries. Or, or doers or actors on behalf of our companies. It's not speaking to the company. And now if our egos and our, our conviction and our own so-called experience becomes bigger and important than the relationship between your two companies. And that's why some companies say, like, we don't want the executive directors to be talking to customers because they're going to tell the customers off because of their own egos. I'm a boss here. Who are you to tell me? You know, meanwhile you are losing you are losing sales. Yeah, uh, it's a, it's a big it's a big uh, training point for salespeople that mm. uh, pride is no place in mm. in sales. If yeah. you are selling, you're selling. Forget yeah. about uh, your ego, how big it is, and all of, that doesn't matter. Always remember. That's why in the old, old days, we used to have this, the customer is king. It was to deal with the, with the pride aspect. Where, yeah. oh, you know, you can't do that to me. Do you know who I am? No, that doesn't happen. What I want to do is to a product. And make, yeah. that's really at the end of the day. It's not about you as a person. And in fact, we get in our own way. I find as coaches. We get in our own way when we are dealing with our own clients as well. Mm. Uh, because we, George comes in, but it shouldn't because you are helping somebody to find solutions to the issues that they have so that they become better. That's, yeah. your, that's, that's why you're there. Mm. Your, your, your personal uh, ego doesn't even feature and shouldn't. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. And, and, and the next point that they're talking about here is understanding when to escalate. But the reason why that is important is to learn to, to, to avoid or to capacitate you to be able to cope with insults and deal with legal and fiscal threats. We are too quick to say, you know what, I'll get my lawyer to sort you out. <laughs> <laughs> now you are threatening this, 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 this individual. Actually, you are threatening the company, but you don't realize that uh, the company in, in its own legal form is innocent. It's just that you and the representative of the company, you are playing egos to each other. And now you want to say to them, I, I'm, I'm going to get my lawyer to sort you out. Then he says, okay, go ahead. Knowing very well that it's not him who's going to go to court. The company will protect itself, especially if the contract is very clear. Hmm. As my lawyer is bigger than your lawyer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why there is things like arbitration and all those type of things, because they do realize that sometimes certain cases should not have even been taken to court. They say, no, no, guys. And then you, see, you find your two lawyers, the two lawyers say, ah, guys, you know what? We recommend you just go and do arbitration. You don't need to be here. 
Because cases land in court not because of legal company entities. It's because of individuals who became heated up and uh, and then started to do things that uh, damaged the relationship between the two companies. Now, for us who are running our own companies, this is a very delicate situation. It is. It is. It is. Um, because, you, it, it, like I said, uh, we're human beings, so we will take offense. But always be speaking to yourself. Every time something goes wrong, understanding that you must be telling yourself, get out of the way. You must always yeah. get out of the way. And then, yeah, let business be at the forefront. Yeah. Yeah. And this is why it's also, it's important as, if, as we run our own business to have somebody to talk to. Mm. Mm. Somebody to talk to and to be very clear with your clients at the forefront, you know, at, this is what we do here. These are the steps we take, etc., cetera, et cetera. My phone is available for you to phone me. Da, da. But make sure that at the start of a relationship, the people understand you as much as possible. Sure, there's no way you can be understood 100%. But mm -hmm. the best you can, this is how we do things here. These are So that they make a conscious decision. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, don't spring things on them. Oh, this is how we do things here. And we're two years into a relationship. But you never told me that's how you do things here. Mm. Yeah. And, and 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 the other danger of being the being the the, the owner of a company or the or the, the, the leader, the director of a company at the same time customer facing is that there's a lot of other information at the back of your mind that the customer is not even aware of. That even your own your own other colleagues are not aware of. As you are talking to this customer, you are busy calculating your balances at the bank. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't think sober. You can't be straight. Because they tell you that, no, we'll pay you in 30 days and you want to negotiate to be paid in 15 days because you know that your balance is, uh, is not working out. But you can't tell the customer because you don't want to be embarrassed. So, 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 your emotions are driven by something. It's not, it's not always because uh, you're just emotional being. You are emotional at that particular point in time because certain things are not well with you. And therefore, you can't be facing a customer at that moment. But the situation forces you to do that. In the process of forcing, squeezing the money out of the customer, you are destroying the relationship. Yeah. So I think it's important to know what, what is the cause of certain attitudes and behaviors and, 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 and egos and practices. It's, it's, it's always located somewhere. Rather deal with those issues than making them the center of your, your the center of determining your, your attitude with your customer. Because the customer is king indeed, George. Because if the customer are not there, there's no business, as Rapula would say. Don't, if you're going to start business, make sure that you have a customer because otherwise it's just going to be fury. And when you have a customer, make sure that you, are, you know exactly what they need from you and make sure that you know your products and services that you are offering to a point that you even know how, how much it's worth. And when they say, yes, I'm in, know how to face it in because sometimes dumping the entire products on the client, you might just be setting them off. So all those things that are uh, uh, nitty gritties of ins and outs of the relationship are not written on the surface when you do customer relationships. That's why companies will choose somebody who is far removed from all these others. Their job is just to go and entertain the customer and uh, introduce the products. And when it's time to sell, they leave it to other people or something like that. It's like a salesperson, George, that has been given a target and is left with one month to make a target and start going to abuse those willing customers to make a target at the end of the month. <laughs> and once they find out that you use them like that, you are gone. Yeah. Every sales bed has got their targets. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's not a nice one when, when the customer isn't behaving and you, you, he, he's making you fail to meet your target. Yeah. yeah. But as Devish has said, it's also important to know the limits. There's sometimes 
you know, you, you get to a point where you say, okay, this is actually the right time just to cut the relationship. Not that mm. you want it, not that you love it, but it's mm. the practical thing for both him and you to go their separate ways. Always try to understand that point and, and, and get to it and move on. Mm. And I think in agreement with that, Ramutla, we all agree we are, that it's nice we are tackling this topic. This is a very, this is not so nice topic. This is a very challenging topic and yet so necessary for us to succeed as business people. I think after sales, this is one topic that you can't get wrong. Great. Uh, uh, yeah, I look at time. It's amazing how time flies when we're discussing topics closer to ourselves like this. So I think the same applies in terms of our relationship with the guests, with the hosts that we bring to our shows, our listeners, and all other stakeholders. Uh, do you mind the checking out and also just pick up one of the 10 points, 10 things you can do to wow customers? We've got 10 of them. I've shared them with you. And please, the, the one who check first starts with number one, make your remarks on it, your view on it, and then also reflect on the discussion and check out. Who wants to check out first? And also touch those one of those ten things you can do to wow your customers. I have the list to contribute, same because I came in late, so I can just say from what I heard, yeah, the most important thing for me and has always been is to listen to customers, uh, however way you do it, with the, how whatever method you use to listen, listen to them. Because there's always something in what they say. It might help you improve your products. It might just keep them longer as your customers. But that's that, that's a big one. Learn to listen to them. And mm. it's, it's, you, you get better with as the years go by and as you get to know uh, them. Because most of them will not open up immediately. But learn to listen to them. They might not be direct. You know, it's also a cultural thing. There are other cultures where they're direct, hey, this is wrong. In other cultures, they're more respectful. They don't. But get to learn to know your customers and hear what they are saying. That's huge, that one. Mm -hmm. I hear you also saying that uh, don't judge them. Just just, just receive what they're saying. Yeah, listen. Yeah. And then let me assign point one here, George. Say, greet customers with a smile, either in person or on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, always with a smile. And, and people can tell when that smile is fake, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. They say that this might sound corny, but customers can indeed hear the smile in your voice when you talk on the phone. <laughs> Good one. Thanks, George. Divesh? Yes, Sam, from my side, uh, I'd combine two because I think they're re relevant with each other. One mm. is to definitely have a in-depth knowledge and understanding of the products and services that you are offering to the customer. And uh, in the same vein, uh, when you are sharing your knowledge and uh, um, uh, knowledge around your product and service, you must not belittle the customer or make them feel as if you are seeing them as being uh, unknowledgeable about the sector and the like. Mm. 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 Yeah, that's the mistake that we tend to do because, because they are the customers and they are buying your product. You always think that they don't know anything about what you are trying to sell to them. And only to find that there's an engineer there who knows your product and even yourself. And you might, it might be just an, be embarrassing. Absolutely. Thank you, Divesh. And Dadera Mudla. We're not hearing you, Dadera Mudla. Um, while you're still sorting your network, let me ask Rapula to check out. Sam, uh, the take home, it's uh, where I'm sitting is to say that 
calmness to the customers, irrespective of whether you are wrong or you are right. And uh, even if you are you are right and the customer customers are wrong, as long as you can remain calm and especially watch the ways you're gonna stay uh, speak to the customer on, uh, you will retain your customers and you will make business similar similar customers. Even if what you what could have been lost at the time, you can add it on as a premium and you cost to recover your losses. It's going to be very simple by listening to their customers and making sure that you calm that customer down. That's my take home uh, on this, uh, this this evening in terms of the customer service and the customer who's the customer. Thank you. This is our goal, Terabula. Uh, doesn't matter what we think. If if this person that you, you is facing you is working for a company that pays for your service, they are that company. And uh, um, even if you feel you are very right in your views, if you really love your company and you really want to grow, you need to put your company first. Doesn't mean that you allow yourself to be abused, but it's very important to remember that, uh, yes, you, you are the director of this company, but this company needs to be given the opportunity to make money. And you are the only person or one of the many people that represent this company that is just a legal entity that cannot talk on its own behalf. I think that's 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 the that's the key point there that you are you are emphasizing. Yeah. You are spot on mm. you know. Umpile? Uh yes, thank you. That is and from my side I also have uh, learned more about uh keeping like a positive attitude when you when you you know when you approach a client so it's always a good to come with a positive energy and also uh like uh what uh, i think uh i think is it Dibesh who said uh yeah who, who said uh i think it was something about having uh, a smile in your face uh, and you know when a customer customers can see through you if you are you are giving them like true or you are not giving them true. So always trying to be authentic in you know helping the customer. Like don't just try to lie to a customer because you want just to impress them, but give it your all in all. And when you give that smile, it must be a smile to say that the customer can always can also see that it's an authentic smile so that's yeah. something i learned and also that you know you have to always make sure that you get the customer and you retain you retain the customer that's something i i mm. took up on the session today thank you thank you thank, thank you very much i hope we met your expectations as you have been looking forward to to this this discussion Yes, it, it just ran short because, uh, it, like you said, when you finished, but uh, when it gets more interesting, you will find out that the time is gone. <laughs> yeah. Good. Nadira Mutla, your last wait. Uh, to, tonight, I'm sure it was about confirmations, confirmations. In, mm. uh, in a supplier-customer relationship, there will often be challenges that will require specific interventions. And some interventions will help retain the relationship, while some will require the customer to acknowledge that uh, the relationship cannot be mended, and therefore he should uh, accept that and terminate the relationship. Mm. It was also confirmed that sometimes you, you deal with personalities in the company, whereas that individual does not own that company, and therefore you must try by all means to escalate and escalate. Sometime you might be lucky to 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 get the correct answers, but obviously if you don't get the correct answers, you have to move on. It was mm -hmm. also the, the importance of uh, identifying the causes of the breakdown in the relationship is very important 
because then you'll come up with interventions that addresses the causes rather than uh, looking at the, the interventions that address the issues and the issues are symptoms. And if you are looking at symptoms, you won't come up with the correct interventions. So hmm. Those are the confirmations for me for tonight. Thanks. Beautiful. Thank you, colleagues. I think we are educating ourselves more than just preparing ourselves for servicing our guests and listeners. This this applies across across the board. Thank you so much. And uh, this laid the ground for, for the next week's search topic, which is going to look at, we're going to look at planning and implementation of the show. And we're going to look at our organizational skills, how to go about doing that. And I would like us to use our case studies from our previous shows, George, Rapula, Divesh, Dadra Mutla, and Mpile. Uh, uh, I think we have, we all have a first-hand experience of the, all the logical steps that you need to follow until the show takes place. But the reference point is the organizational skills. Uh, we run businesses, uh, sometimes we, we, we are diving into our business and find ourselves doing a lot of logistical stuff and administrative stuff. And if you don't have organizational skills, you, you literally can't get out of that ladder. And that affects the productivity levels out there in the market. So that will be next week's uh, topic. I'm sure you're looking forward to that one. Thank you so much, listeners, uh, colleagues. Uh, that was the... Uh, uh, unit number 30, Conduct 25, Customer Service and Aftercare. That was Commercial Radio Worldwide, The Mind, The Journey, The Destiny. We apply our mind to the journey that takes us to our destiny. Our shows are based on the principle called the idea. We inform, entertain, develop and educate, empower and support, associate and network. That's the idea. We will have the podcast of this unit available within 24 hours. You can check it. And I hope we have addressed some of your expectations. Thank you. We look forward to welcoming you again next week as we move on with unit number 31, Conduct 26, Planning and Implementation Using Organizing Skills. My name is Sam Zima. And I was joined by our co-hosts, Rapula Mulivani, Divesh Motilal, Franz Ramutla, Ompile Liepile, George Mutenda Zamera. And then, of course, uh, you listeners, thank you for being part of us. Goodbye and take care. Goodbye. Night. Night, night. Thank you.